What's up everyone, today we are out on another ride and we'll do a talking review. We are going to check out 5 reasons you should pick the Excalibur 8 over the Roscoe 8. Now these two bikes are very well compared against uh, in the same category of kind of cross country heavy trail bike and uh, Excalibur used to be the go to and as the Roscoe series has developed over the years it's becoming more of the more of the go to and that's where people are leaning but that Excalibur range still holds heart for most people and it's a big question whether they should go with it so here are five reasons I think you should pick the Excalibur 8 over the Roscoe 8. Now let's start off by saying the Excalibur 8 and the Roscoe 8 are the same number but price wise they definitely are a little more drastic and part of that is the part spec you get and how much more bigger suspension costs so realistically that's why they're numbered the same just as Trek would want but they're also completely different prices so this isn't just about price this is comparing the two ranges of models and what's going on there all right so the Excalibur 8 number one reason and not in numerical order being this is the most important reason but this is the first reason why you should buy it over the Roscoe straight out of the box it is going to be a lighter weight bike with that small amount of suspension smaller tires still tubeless setup you're going to be a lot lighter weight by a pound and a bit which is a big deal when you're potentially climbing a lot or pushing a lot of weight uphill it's going to make a huge deal and that is something you should really really consider especially if you're in a more hilly cross country up and down trail position which many people are although we want to be the downhill friendly place you know that lightweight kind of will add up over the whole duration of the ride So point number two, we'll get straight to it, is the price. Obviously, comparing the two bikes, there's a huge price difference, nearly $1,000 difference in Canada here to drop down to the Excalibur 8. You will still get a one-by drivetrain, hydraulic disc brakes, a good fork for what it is, and it is going to make up for a really good ride as well, being that faster kind of geometry and wheel size so you'll be able to make up on the flats and the climbs and the faster flowy stuff than you might with a more expensive bike which just is way small and rolls heavier number three if you are in a more cross country up down up down kind of position the Excalibur will be a faster flowing bike for you the lighter weight setup and the faster rolling wheels as well as a little bit less suspension travel are going to keep those wheels planted to the ground faster rolling and they're going to really perform well the whole overall bike is designed for that xc racer or starting to get into xc racing as opposed to that fun jump around kind of setup this is meant to keep that flow to keep that speed and in some areas it's more of a benefit to do that Although it might be fun to hit every little jump, if you come slow at the bottom of the hill and can't keep your speed up, well then you're just going to have a hard climb up and you won't keep a momentum over the ridge to keep it going again. Cross country bikes are meant for cross country travel and down country bikes are meant for down country, aka more down than up. So that is a big reason why the Excalibur might be much better for you and that is just based on your terrain. Number four refers back to the same idea with the price. It comes with a lot of upgradability. So this might be a really good option for someone who doesn't have the funds to go for a Roscoe 8 right now, but would want to in the future. The geometries are different, but they're not that different. You can definitely upgrade the suspension. You can definitely upgrade and add a dropper post. You could even upgrade the whole bike to the Excalibur 9 and still be cheaper than the Roscoe 8. So it's really interesting the way Trex price these bikes. It's a huge gap between them. And no, it doesn't mean every 8 level bike is the top of the line one. But it is interesting to see how they have kind of priced the Excalibur now against what the Roscoe's are. The Roscoe's are a more expensive, heavy duty version. 
whereas the Excaliburs might be this friendly bleeding edge into faster cross-country race machines, which could be upgraded to be extremely fast cross-country race machines, as opposed to just a point down a hill, bounce off every single rock, and make it to the bottom no issue. Now the last thing is back to that price once again. For the dollar you're getting, you are getting an insane price back on this. You're getting a Dior 12 speed shifting, 10 to 51 ratio. It's actually a really good setup for that shifting for a quite low price in comparison to what you would get for the same performance essentially out of the Eagle drivetrain on the Roscoe. As well, when you refer back to the brakes, you are getting a really good brake set to it. It's still a hydraulic disc brake, the MT200, which are used on like full suspension bikes, really good bikes. But instead of having a big heavy four piston, which yes, will come in handy, unless you're doing again that straight down, you're not ever going to need. It's just a little bit more friendly for everyone as opposed to focusing to the guys who are looking to just hammer down the hill. The price spec which comes with it for the price is excellent. You really check every box that a mountain bike is looking for these days. And although you get those same boxes with the Roscoe, you have a lot more money in your pocket at the end of the day for that part spec, which to be honest, I think will perform very, very well. And this is something which has been a big topic of conversation, Shimano, SRAM, what's better, what's better. Nobody really knows, depending what you're doing, sometimes one's better than the other. Many people just have their preferences. They both have Rock Shocks front fork on it. This one may only have the more basic setup with the Judy SL, but it's still an air fork, so you're still gonna be able to tune it. And although it's still got a QR on the back, you know, it is stiffer and you do get a little bit more compliance out of it. It's interesting to know if anyone really notices the difference when you're on the trails and whether it's that much stronger or that much better. For the everyday rider, I'm not too sure. Definitely sounds good on paper, but I'm just not sure if it's really that great. I wrote it completely growing in. All right guys, so hopefully this little video is gonna be helpful for you. Thought to compare two similar bikes. I mean, there are closer ones in price, but in model number, these are the same. It's hard to know where to compare against. These are two of the most popular bikes out there. They're both fast, they're both fun. One comes with a more expensive part spec and one comes with a less expensive part spec, but with a really, really great value. The Excalibur 8 is great for anyone doing that cross country, longer distance, lightweight needing bike. If you're doing big hill climbs constantly, this might be a bit better of a bike for you, especially if they're more often than the downhills. It's going to flow a lot faster for you. It's got the part spec to back it up, and it's got a pretty good price behind it as well. Two pretty good colors. I do like that new red and white one as well as the black. Um, it's just nice that you've got two options. They were seemingly weaning it out a little bit and thinning it out, but seems like with the new Roscoe's it really set a home in place for the Excaliburs where you can expand from the Merlin series. All right guys, let me know if this helped down below and which one you choose or which one you think is a better comparison. Subscribe, comment, like, and yeah, thanks for watching. Good luck guys. Chris out. Enjoy the ride.